Um, I'd like to call to order um, the Weathersfield School Board meeting for Tuesday, December 13th at 6.33 p.m. And we'll begin with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Um, to begin with, if there are any changes or additions to the agenda, does anyone have any changes or additions? If Mark is online, right? Oh, you can. We have Mark online, right? Oh, there he is. I see him. Yeah. Um, Yes, you, have you, you You requested changes or additions to the agenda. I, I filled out my little card there and it's on there. Okay, so you want to do for public participation or you want to make an actual agenda? Well, I, 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 on my card, I requested the, uh, item 6G be moved up on the on the agenda. Oh, okay. So I, I think you have people so here that are now? here for that purpose. For that purpose? Sure. I, okay. I believe Mr. Harrison, our representative, okay. is probably. We will move that. that to the I first to part. Put words in your mouth, John. <laughs> Just guessing. Okay. Okay. <laughs> All right, we will do that. Um, no problem. Anything else? Okay. Um, next up, I have approval of the minutes for November 8th. And I'll make a motion to suspend the minutes. Thank you. We will we'll, we'll postpone that till next month. All, right. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, great, thank you. Um, Who made the motion for that, please? Nicole. Okay, thanks. Um, let's see, um, up next we have um, public participation and announcements. Um, I just have one thing on here, focus on learning. That's if, if kids are coming to present, we put it right in the agenda. Oh, okay. So we're not having any presentations yeah, today. Okay. Um, and was there anything here that was, did you want to say anything, Jeremy? Um, I can just get back to both the CLA if necessary. Uh, well, well, so that's what you're here to talk about, is, so we'll save that for the CLA discussion. Um, Um, all right, so if there isn't any other public participation, uh, we can move on. All right, up next is the administrative report, which I believe we have lead learner Martis online. Uh, hi, everybody. Um, Christine. Well. Yes. <laughs> so sorry, I'm feeling horrible still. Um, Christine, are you going to put it up? Oh, thank you. I will. Sorry, I couldn't be there in person, but I don't think you guys want me there. We don't want you here. <laughs> no. And this will be short. I will be a few words tonight. Are you going to stay on for the whole meeting, like for when we talk about the budget? Or are you going to? Yes. Ahead? Yeah, I'll stay on. I'll just turn off my camera so you guys don't have to look at me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right, so this is the lead learner report for December 13th, 2022. And then first off, we have our athletic update by our wonderful athletic director, Carrie Jewell. Hello, <laughs> uh, not, not a whole lot to report tonight, but um, our sports are fully underway. We have um, what we're referring to as 141 registrations. That's not individual athletes, but that's um, being involved in a sport, so some students signed up for two, some three sports for this winter. So we have 80 kids uh, playing basketball, 41 for indoor soccer, 20 for cheerleading. Um, we have had our practices are all underway. We have our first away game for basketball tomorrow, our first home game Friday night. Um, indoor soccer has had its first rounds of games. We have four teams. Um, and that is super fun. If you see when those are posted, I just, I invite you to come. It is, we play music, 
the kids laugh. It's just a ton of fun and it's really, really building their skills. So um, we're enjoying that. And Red River Cares um, gave us an award of $500 to support the indoor soccer program. So we, we are waiting for that to come in. Um, so that will help to, to boost the program a little bit more. Um, and our my last point is we are hosting a pitching clinic um, in February for um, kids that are interested in learning to pitch or advance their pitching skills in baseball. And that is go going to be held by um, Dylan McCarthy, who has been recruited to a D1 school for pitching and is likely headed to the major leagues. <laughs> and uh, the pitching coach for an Upper Valley um, like minors league, I'm not exactly sure what the title is. Um, so we can take 20 kids total, and so far we have 12 registered, and it's only been a, a few days. So um, it's a really great opportunity. It's a great Christmas gift if you have someone in your family you'd like to do the pitching clinic. Um, and that's really all I have for tonight. We're just kind of going along. Great. Uh, I see Mark has a question. Mark Hanna. I understand we had a student go to national for uh, you're breaking up, Mark. I understand we had a uh, a student for the nationals for um, cross country. Yeah, so Isaac McNaughton qualified to go to nationals in Texas and was scheduled to leave Thursday and Wednesday came down ill and could not go. Um, so we did have a big thing uh, kind of planned to send him off and unfortunately he's had to miss it this year, um, but he runs really fast, so maybe he'll make it back <laughs> next year. Um, and I should highlight that we had lots of students um, and student athletes participate in two Nutcracker versions this weekend. Um, so out there doing their thing as well. Yeah. Involved in that staff, workers. <laughs> You're still breaking up, Mark. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you can type a comment if you want, and I can read it. Okay. We had at least 20 students uh, and staff, whether all the time. The Nutcracker, 20 oh, students, 20 in students in and some staff, yeah. yep. yes, yep. and some parents, yeah, and, yes, and some teachers, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was a great performance, by the way, definitely. Two different highlights like, of oh, the holiday Two different season. dance companies, yeah, both last yeah. weekend, yeah. Any other questions? Thank you, Carrie. Um, and she's right. The indoor soccer is great. I was able to watch a game last, not this past weekend, but the weekend before. Um, and we, the amount of sportsmanship that's shown by our kids is incredible because it is a mix of fourth grade through eighth grade. And they even had some younger ones this weekend. But just how the kids really work together as a team was really, really heartfelt. So that was great. Um, next up is our PTO um, president, Jamie Richardson. Everybody, good evening. Um, mine is also pretty brief tonight. Um, just wanted to um, let you all know that we had um, our beloved Make It and Take It event that has been on hiatus for the last few years due to COVID restrictions. Um, it finally happened this year. It's an event where young folks can come in, any Weathersfield young person um, or a relation of those kids uh, can come in and, and make up to five gifts for family or friends or whomever themselves in some cases they loved it so much i saw me to me on the tags uh which you know we don't judge we love good gifts so uh, we had about 150 kids um register and some didn't come some additions came so we still um had about 150 young people come through for um we had 18 stations worth of um, different crafts and keepsake items we had about 25 volunteers. Um, we, uh, some of you are in this room right now and we greatly, greatly appreciate our volunteers. Uh, BJ brings in her entire family for us. <laughs> Babies and all. <laughs> oh my gosh. So uh, we're just incredibly grateful as always to our volunteers. Um, when you need that many extra bodies um, working for several hours, it's a lot. And we know that's a big ask. And so we're just always very, very grateful to our community and our family and our friends. 
uh, who give up a Sunday in this particular case um, and half of a Saturday to come in and prepare. Um, uh, so at the same event this year, we decided to include a craft and vendor fair in the gymnasium. So we had 23 vendors uh, participate in that, uh, many of which have participated in a bunch of other craft and vendor fairs. We were almost the last, one of the last ones of the season, um, and they did really, really well. We're very, very pleased to participate with us. So we've had some folks already reach out and ask to come next year, and oh, I'm sorry I couldn't come this year, and oh, I want that same spot next year, you know, all those kind of things. So we're hoping that um, nothing will stop us from making it bigger and better. Uh, I think I say that every time I, I come and talk about things. So they get to take us back, and um, it was very, very exciting. It's it's just really nice to see that energy in the school and so many young kiddos that are independently building these sweet little gifts for their family and friends. And we had a wrapping station, so everything. I know my daughter came in and she built five. I don't know what was there because I was. Um, Spoiler alert, I was uh, sh shadow, right? No, and yeah. shadow. Oh, thank you, Sarah, with my, or my eyes. Is Sarah still here with my eyes? So I was in the Panther costume. I had a blast and dying to get into that thing. And so finally this time, I, everyone thought I was BJ, but BJ was there in real life. So it was like a real. They were like, what's going oh, on here? Wait, that's BJ, but you're BJ, so I had a blast. But anyway, um, so we had a great, great time. Um, so thank you very much to everyone who participated. Donated. There are some uh, folks that may have station that pay for the entire craft that they're doing as a donation, and that's a really big deal. Um, so we're, we're just very, very thankful for that. Um, we also held an apparel sale for the holidays, so we're just waiting on those orders to come in. We appreciate everybody who uh, purchased an item of weather sealed swag that will be um, a holiday gift item maybe for a friend or family member or their kiddos. Um, so we'll let everybody know when those come in, but we're anticipating that will be early next week, so they'll be out in time for the holidays. So we'll. Uh, the company that we use for that organizes them, so it's um, they'll be delivered to school with names on them or however we can arrange. So, it, and there was a note um, on the order form if it was a gift, so that it won't be a spoiler for your uh, mm -hmm. students. Um, I certainly hope not. Um, we have a couple things coming up, so you'll probably hear from me next month as well. But just to, to bring awareness, we have another school dance that we're sponsoring called the Snow Ball. So we have visions of snow bouncing in our heads and. It's a middle school dance, and that's on the 13th of January. And then after that, we really wanted some of our young folks, our young kiddos, to be able to participate in a family dance. So around the Valentine's Day time, that'll be for our K-5 students that will come and uh, dance to DJ CJ, which is Carrie Jewell, who was just here. She's our resident <laughs> DJ. She does a great job. Um, and then something that we wanted to, to uh, celebrate last year, but it was... Um, was the 100th day of school, so it varies given snow days and, and whatnot, and we wanted to do it last year, but we were actually after 100 days by the time we had calculated the number of days. So it's just a really neat way for us to get in and celebrate the kids during, it'll be around the end of February, and that gets to be kind of dark and dreary and sad time of the year, and so that'll be for the entire school. So we're Pinteresting our way through that concept right now. Uh, that's always a dangerous place for, for our committee. So um, those are my highlights this month, and um, we just really appreciate your support, as always, for everything that we're trying to accomplish. So if you ever have any questions or want to attend a meeting, just let me know. Jamie? I just wanted to personally thank you, the PTO, all the volunteers for the Make It and Take It. It's, it's such an amazing, amazing event. Awesome. So thank you. Thank you very, very much. It was a lot of fun. Many of our us were, it was our first time even experiencing it at all. So it was a lot of fun for us to see the wildness of hot glue. I we, that, we controlled the hot glue, but it was a lot of. I see that Mark has his hand raised again. Try this again. <laughs> oh, right. Mark? I put his hand down. Okay. I guess it was probably still off for me more. But. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thank you very much, Jamie. We appreciate all of that you do and our PTO does that makes our school a better place. So we truly appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks, Brian. We, we enjoy it, right, Sarah? <laughs> 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 right, Sarah? <together. laughs> all right. Um, so just wanted to give you everybody uh, just a little update. So last Friday, this past Friday, we had had to do an emergency early release day. Um, we had no power, so we had to make the call um, because when you have no power, um, and it's really weird, our, our building set up where I guess we get power sources from three different companies. Um, so a couple places had power here and there, but the main part of the building was out of power. 
So because of the safety of the kids and not having the fire alarms and everything up, we went ahead and made the call to um, go ahead and release the kids early. So we had, we utilized technology that students had because our phone lines were down. So we had students who have cell phones call parents and show their teachers that they're riding the bus or they're, you know, getting picked up just so we had that done. Um, and then of course our power did come on right after we made the announcement. But once we did it, we, we were gonna continue to go with it. So it was just a great job by the students, um, our staff, and then our community too. Um, and everybody was there to pick up their kids or ride home on the bus and they were thankful and I think we were done and had buses gone by 12.03 on that day. So it was pretty amazing um, just the response that we had from everybody. So just a shout out and a thank you to, to everybody for making that possible. And that was our first and hopefully our last or emergency early release, but um, it, it can be done and it can be done really quickly. So I appreciate that. All right, um, staffing update. We did hire a school nurse. Um, so Grace Knight, her official first day was last Monday. Um, she's awesome. Um, it's really great to be able to have her in there. Um, that's my son blowing his nose um, in the background. Sorry about that. Um, um, it's great to have her in there. She has a, a wealth of experience and she actually was even a school nurse several years ago at Weathersfield. She did, shared a contract and was there part-time. So it's great for her to come back. Um, and so it's just, it's really nice to have her there and she's fitting, a lot, fitting in really quickly with our students and our staff. Um, we still are in need of a paraprofessional and a world language teacher. Those ads are out there, but still we just don't have anybody looking for those yet, but to give you a staffing update. And then um, Leader and Me, um, it's been going pretty awesome. Um, so the students have finished all of their um, mission statements and they've been living those every day in academics and, and also with the social emotional learning piece. Um, the students are going over the seven habits that common language is definitely across the school. Um, our student leaders are sharing that information in the morning when they do morning announcements and are also sharing the wigs, the wildly important goals and starting to talk about those. Um, and then our Lighthouse team members met last week and we're reviewing our next steps and we're looking forward to moving into core two in January on our January in-service day before kids come back. Um, I wanna give a special thank you to our budget advisory committee. They've had two meetings, one with me, one without me. They, had, they met tonight right before the meeting. So I appreciate all of their help and hard work. So Dominique Turco, Deborah Richardson, Sarah Steele, and Jonah Steele, thank you guys very much um, for meeting and going forward with that. And it's it's hard work, but they've scoured through the budget. They've looked at it really closely, and we just really appreciate your help with that. And then our Pride Award um, for Perseverance, Respect, Integrity, Determination, and Empathy. We have our December assembly this Friday, and so we've been working at making sure that those students that are those award winners um, family members will be there to watch them accept the award and then to have that small reception with them Friday morning. So we're excited about <laughs> having that this Friday. Um, and then, um, so continuing with building our community, we're having our monthly conversation with Chief Spaulding regarding fire safety. Um, last month we had on those November 16th, we had the emergency preparedness meeting and we actually hosted it at Weathersfield. Um, because since we're one of the potential emergency sites, if we do have an evacuation, I felt it was important for people to see where they could go. And so they were there at that meeting, which was nice. And uh, interim, interim superintendent Bourne was there as well. So we appreciate her support in our town. Um, we're having a clothing drive swap this weekend on Saturday here at school. Um, food baskets for holiday events went out to multiple families. And it was always great to be able to see and to be able to give out for families that are in need. Um, we are working on our emergency generator grant. Would have been helpful to have that on Friday because we would have kicked into that, but it was sort of ironic that we were working on that and then the power goes out. So it just shows that we, we probably really need that. And then our Thanksgiving community dinner was amazing. Um, the amount of people that showed up um, it was just, I mean, it was, it was great. The families were there, grandparents were there and all just to be able to break bread with us and share and be part of our Weathersfield community, which was really nice. So 
we appreciate everybody that was able to make that happen. And it was great to have it during the day because I think it involved more people that way. And um, I know our food service guy, Craig, is very, was very impressed with Weathersfield. So we, we appreciate that. So, um, And then our enrollment numbers, we have 247 and we have one that just is coming in and it's going to be starting. So our average daily attendance is 88.99. Um, it's dropped down below that 90%, but when the flu is going around, I understand. I'm living that right now, so I definitely understand. So um, we'll work on continuing to get kids here and get them you know, healthy at school, but that's um, important, so that's where we're at. So as we have one person leave, we have another person come in, so we're really staying steady at that high 240 number with the amount of students. Um, upcoming events I mentioned, I think, yes, I mentioned the Pride Assembly. I mentioned Weathersfield Clothing Drive. Um, K5 Winter Sing Along is on the 21st. Then we also have an early release that day that day. And then we have winter break um, on the 22nd through the 3rd. And then students will return to us on the 4th. And then also something I forgot in there is a building update. Um, in our music room, we approved last year to get the um, mini splits for that room. Those have not come in yet because of a vendor issue. So we're still waiting on those. And then um, they've been able to fix the lights on the parking lot area, but we still have some type of lighting issue in the back part of the building that basically surrounds us. Any light that's attached to the building along the backside is not working properly. And so I talked to the electrician again the other day, him and I have been on almost on a daily basis. So I talked to him, I think it was on Friday. Um, and so he believes there's a shortened one. He's ordered some lights, but those again are on back order as well. So that is in the process. He's hoping to get those fixed during winter break. So with sports coming up right now, we have everybody coming through the front doors, but it would be nice to be able to use those back doors as well. All right. And I think that is it for me. Thank you. Any questions? Yeah. Okay. Does anyone have any questions? All right. Oh, I'm up. Um, and I'm not going to deliver my whole SU report, but it is linked for anybody that wants to see it, and it's also um, recorded and online. I am just going to pull one slide um, of some things that are going on, just 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 so you know. Um, we have an opportunity for um, administrators in the state to participate in uh, the Margaret Waddington Leadership Cohort. It is. Uh, an amazing program. I've been through uh, Waddington 1 and 2 myself, and it really helps you develop leadership skills. Um, there's a lot of surveys done, 360s, to see how you're doing with your um, staff and help, um, help you grow your skills. It is uh, paid for through the Margaret Waddington um, Fund. She was a, a physician, and she passed away, and she left money uh, for leadership in the state of Vermont in education, healthcare, and, and for students. So we get to go at no cost, and it's an amazing program. And I am pleased to report that four of our lead learners are going to be participating in the next cohort, and Brian is one of those. So um, I'm sure he'll, he'll report out on how it goes. It's a year-long cohort, so um, it's, a, it's a lengthy, very um, inspiring and valuable program. So we're excited about that. Um, just an update on our equity audit. The deadline for the survey responses was November 18th. We had a good um, amount of people uh, fill out the survey. Uh, Insight Education is going over those results now. And the next um, phase will be focus groups. So they will we'll be asking people to participate in those focus groups with a deadline of mid-January for the results to be, be released to us. And then we'll dive into those and figure out how to share them out with communities. Um, and our lead learners are really role modeling, um, instructional leadership, and trying to create a culture of continuous improvement in our schools, which means they, um, you know, kind of have to model some things. So they have sent out lead learner uh, surveys, fall surveys to staff, just for feedback on how they're doing um, in, in their leadership roles and what we can look at to be better. So they're diving into that data, and we'll report that out to their respective staffs and set some goals around that. Um, so we we value feedback from people. We need to give it and, and receive it. So it's, it's a model of that. So um, that's all I'm going to share with you tonight. I'm happy to take questions. 
I also just wanted to say thank you to the PTO. It's incredible. Um, and Carrie's gone, but um, the work that you do is is very, very much appreciated and um, even talked about in other schools across the MCO. <laughs> and there have been um, comments about, wow, would it be great for all the PTOs to kind of get together and, and brainstorm and share ideas? So um, I just wanted to give you that feedback. Oh, that's excellent. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to find idea that. Yeah. Thanks, Christine. Yeah, you're welcome. All right. So I am going to turn it back over to you. Okay. And I will stop sharing. Were there any questions? Anyone? Online or otherwise? Okay. All right. We will move on to items for discussion. And up first, we have um, the CLA letter to the select board. Um, CLA is the common level of appraisal. Um, we received a letter from the state, the um, state of Vermont, the commissioner of taxes released the um, FY 2024 education tax rate letter. And in it, they talk about um, some things that could be good for our taxes and some things that can be bad for our taxes and um, for our tax rates, that is. Um, the uh, they mentioned in here about the CLA and how some communities will see taxes increase because of uh, the CLAs that their towns have. And um, so, so we decided as a board that we wanted to send a letter. Um, I've drafted that letter, but we haven't approved it yet. Um, I believe we have some members of the community here that want to talk about it. Um, so, so would anyone like to get started or? Would you like to know what our letter says? Yeah, I, I guess I, I can just read you the letter, but we haven't, we haven't talked about it amongst ourselves yet, so um, it's not 100% like the finished letter. But <laughs> For me, that would be a letter for us to start. <laughs> um, did you guys, did, every, did all the board members get a chance to read the letter that I sent you? Is every, do they have any comments about it or changes they'd like to make to it? <clears throat> Well, then I'll read it. <laughs> um, Dear Town of Weathersfield Select Board members, we are writing to you today to express our desire to have the town's properties reassessed. Our common level of appraisal, CLA, has fallen steadily over the past few years. It will fall even lower this year. We have also been informed that it will take three to four years to have this reappraisal done. While the overall amount of money that will be paid by all Weathersfield taxpayers may not change much, it is our belief that some taxpayers may be paying more than they should while others aren't paying enough. The CLA is applied evenly over all taxpayers, whereas a reassessment would take into account whether a homeowner has added a bathroom or finished a basement. Also, new builds are assessed at today's values, yet they are still subjected to the same CLA adjustment as everyone else in town. Um, the low CLA has also, also has an effect on the property tax rate that voters vote on in March. The CLA multiplier makes our budget appear that it has increased more than it has. For instance, FY22 Weathersfield tax rate was 1.7941. Um, FY23 Weathersfield tax rate, if the CLA was 80%, which is, I can only hope it will be that good. <laughs> um, <laughs> it will be 1.9483. Uh, the FY23 Weathersfield tax rate, if the CLA was 100%, would be 1.5586. We are anticipating that the CLA will be below 80% this year in Weathersfield, and over the next three to four years, it will only go lower, making school budgets harder and harder to pass. It is our hope that you will take the steps necessary to begin the reappraisal process as soon as possible. Thank you for your time. And we also, we had discussed um, perhaps getting together with you guys and having a meeting regarding this. And there are some other things we'd love to work with the town on. Uh, you want to start with this or you want me to? Um, can you read that part again where you said that um, if, if the CLA was 80%, the tax rate would be 1.9483 yes. if it was 
hundred percent of the one point five five eight six. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Yes. And that's based on what budgets? Um. Th well, that was what Larry advised. Yes. Yeah. So that's based on the FY twenty three yeah. proposed budget. Yes. Okay. Yeah. When the COA was 87.89. Is that right? Excuse me? The COA was 87.89 in 23. Yeah, we were just asked what, because we don't have this year's figures yet. We just were using last year's figures to come oh, up okay. with the I, see what, I see what you're yeah. saying. But if the budget stayed the same yeah, yeah. for FY24, uh -huh. then. Yeah. Okay. And you're projecting that the COA will get down to 80? Uh, actually, probably probably be lower than eighty. I'm not sure. How, how are you, project, hard, how are you projecting that? Be, what was it this year? It was eighty. Seven point eight nine. Seven point eight nine. And the year before it was ninety four, I believe. Ninety three point one. Yeah, and so. So back in two thousand and eight, I mean, I'm not speaking like for or against. I'm just okay. here to present some facts. But in two thousand and eight, we had a reappraisal. And at that time, when you have a reappraisal, your CLA turns to 100, mm -hmm. which is where you were talking. So that was 2008 was the last year. Yeah. And then in 2012, our CLA was 90.34. In 2013, it was 90.86. So what that means is between 2008 and 2012, our CLA went from 100 to 90.34. So we lost 10 points. Mm -hmm. um, that went down by 10. <clears throat> then. In 2013, it went to 90.86. In 2014, it went to 96.01. So between 13 and 14, it increased by six. <laughs> and then in 2015, it increased by four. 2016, it stayed the same at 100.22. 2017, it dropped to 99.66. And then it started falling um, steadily. <clears throat> From 99.66 to 98.79 in 2018, to 96.45 in 2019, to 95.47 in 2020, to 93.94 in 2021, to 93.11 in 22, and 87.89 in 23. So it, it has I mean, to be it, it may there. not be as bad as 80, but um, so you, so we, we went down. It looks like <clears throat> six. So if we went down another six, it would be 81. Um, and property values have continued to go up. I mean. It's just the thing that's continued on. So I wouldn't I wouldn't imagine it would it will be much higher than if it does if it falls below eighty five percent, or if, if it goes above one hundred and fifteen percent, the town would be notified that a reappraisal must be conducted. Uh, okay. Um, yeah. So the town is given an opportunity at that time to comply with the reappraisal order, um, and if the town fails to submit an acceptable compliance plan. Or fails to carry it out, the state can withhold education, transportation, and other funds until such time as the department certifies that the town is fair. So it does drop down to below 85%, you're projecting 80, mm -hmm. then we would be notified that we have to approve okay. the appraisal. We don't have to join. We'll go make you do it. Okay. Um, yeah. But I, I, I just, um, you know, I just wanted to sort of put this sort of be in your bonnet because it does, we are looking three to four years out for a reappraisal to take place. So, you know, I think it's a good idea to to get that process started as soon as possible, since we're already at eighty seven last year. But history has shown us that you know between two thousand and eight and two thousand and twelve, um, the CLA did drop, but then it went back up to one hundred. Yeah. So it could go the other way, um, and if it does, I'm not sure if it would be worthwhile to do a rephrase or not. But we do have the money in the bank to do a reappraisal. Um, the town, each town in the state of Vermont receives an annual payment from the state to help with the cost of the reappraisal. And the amount that we receive is $8.50 per parcel per year. Um, so we currently have a balance of $261,000 to do that. Okay. I, I believe back under uh, Jim Mullen, if I'm not mistaken, John, uh, that we, we started putting money in that account. To, to make sure mm -hmm. that, that we would, if, if we ever hit that track, I think it was yeah, back in those those 90 numbers that we wanted to make sure that it kept going that way, mm -hmm. that we didn't see a spike in the tax rate. We wanted to make sure that, that we were prepared for that. And, and so we are. 
<laughs> if we need to, we're prepared for it. Okay. <laughs> yeah, but, and, and uh, you know, the, the, uh, I've heard John, Mr. Erson has come to us a couple times with this issue, and um, you know, it, it is it is possible that that could happen. But as Brandon said, it's possible it could go the other way. Either way, we're prepared for it. Either way, it's going to take four years for it. Yeah. I mean, and that's speculation, as far as I know. I, I don't, I don't know. And I haven't spoken with any, any contractors on this to know whether that would be it or not. In addition to that, like the CLA in twenty one was ninety three point nine four. Our homestead tax rate was one point seven eight. This year in twenty three, CLA is eighty seven point eight nine. Tax rate is one point seven nine four one. So it's very close. In fact, when our CLA was ninety three point one one. Which is closer to that 100 mark. The homestead tax rate was 1.94, which yeah. is significantly higher. Um, well, the uh, last year there was a surplus in the state budget, yeah. and a lot of towns actually saw their taxes go down, whereas we didn't see that because of our CLA. We saw them more hold steady. <clears throat> yes, John? Uh, one point that uh, we're missing right now is that. If you look at the spreadsheet that's published in the town slash school report where the CLA is applied, it's not the same from the town from the town standpoint, a dollar is a dollar, and one they 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 go like this. That doesn't mean every property does that. And you had a good point earlier that some properties maybe are undervalued and some are over. I doubt if any are overvalued from our current <laughs> list. But nonetheless, the farther away from 100 percent you get. The more your penalty is, and that's that's what needs to be corrected. Everybody's paying more than what's necessary, it, which means the state doesn't really mind that a whole lot because it means we're we're plucking less from the the pool of money that that creates the yield number. But nonetheless, every taxpayer in town is paying more than they have to right now, and we need to and and. Uh, I don't, uh, maybe real estate doesn't follow inflation exactly, but if I thought it was 12 years, Brandon, but maybe uh, I'll trust that it was, that it was 2008. I'm not that sure that's when it was filed. But anyway, regardless, let's say it's 12 years. Look at 1% inflation, that's, that's 12% right there, and that's where we're at. So to, to think that it's gonna tick up or anything, and yeah, some years it does, some it doesn't, but, but real estate, uh, I think we're over the hump, purely speculation on my part, on, on properties uh, being way overvalued. But anybody that follows the real estate ads at all, they aren't coming down. Uh, maybe sales are going down, but the prices really haven't. And, and nobody right now, nobody can afford to build anything because it's uh, so expensive. But my point is that without getting closer to 100%, we're all paying more than we should. Thank you, John. Yes, Mike? Yeah, uh, John, I, I, have, I have to disagree with you on, and, and this is knowledge that I, I over the last six months, um, bass player of my band's mother died. 40 acre farm, This it's not in Vermont, but it's it's in this area, Langdon. So it's, it's in the area. Um, it's, it's a 40 acre farm with a farmhouse. Um, six months ago, it was almost $700,000 with a realtor. Um, but they couldn't sell it because his mother was still alive, but they had the appraisal done and he's working on some subdivisions. Two weeks ago, three weeks ago, um, they came back out, it's dropped to $200,000. It dropped that much. What's it on the grand list for? Well, I, that I don't know. Okay. Now that I, that I don't know, but but as far as real estate and sales, because that's what you're talking about is prices are up, prices are down. You're talking about real estate, real estate changing hands and selling. And that's the point. It, it was up and now it's down. Mm -hmm. So let's say it doesn't tick, tick farther below 87. It, it, regardless, the fact is that, and, and Ed Connor actually can explain this a lot better than I can, but, but that if you go through that spreadsheet that's in the town so the school report, you can see where it's applied. And, we'll, and the state doesn't like to call it a penalty, but they might just as well call it that. I just want to make one more. One more comment. Um, the life cycle of a reappraisal is a totally normal cycle to go through in any municipality in Vermont. So and the cycle is as follows. So first you have a reappraisal. 
Um, the second thing that happens is you have aging of brand list information and property data. So there it is, the changing of the real estate market nationally and locally. Fourth is erosion of common level of appraisal, which we're kind of seeing. Um, sales prices and fair market values are no longer in line with assessed values. <clears throat> and then fifth, the erosion of the coefficient of dispersion. Um, assessments are no longer uniform from one property or type of property to another, which then triggers six, the new reappraisal is needed. So I'm not completely sure where we're at, but it seems like we're closer between five and six, um, unless it goes the other way. What you said there's a there's a cycle of um, a reappraisal. Yeah. What, is there a number attached to it or just? It, it, it says the erosion of the coefficient of dispersion. Um, so if it, I, I believe it's twenty percent. So if the COD is greater than twenty percent, okay. Um, then in that time, similar to whether if it if it drops below eighty five or above one fifteen. I know Cavendish uh, completed a reappraisal year or two ago and they were on a 12 year cycle baltimore is doing theirs now and they're about the same so uh and and, and mike i agree with you that uh, land values have not followed uh land with structures uh land values have not climbed anywhere near what uh, mm -hmm. and also yeah i mean i just want an example so you know the the just be a bad realtor the first time. And I get an honesty, I don't know why I'm camping this because I know I'm on too low. Yeah. <laughs> and we can fix that. <laughs> <laughs> I shouldn't be keeping my head really low. Well, I mean, I, I have a pretty good feeling that the state will probably take care of this for us this year because I, I'm pretty sure CLA is going to be lower than 85%. So uh, <laughs> we don't need to have an argument about it, but um. <laughs> I, I think it's been an open discussion. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we'll, we'll, we'll get the information and then the information will be released and then mm -hmm. we'll go from there. Okay. But Thank the slide you. Point, What's that number release? They know? did agree to discuss this on Monday. So in the last meeting, uh -huh. this was brought up by John and then the board of the chair right. decided to put it on the next agenda. So it's on the select board agenda <laughs> for Monday's meeting. Oh, okay. I have to discuss a reappraisal, which will be similar to what I've talked about. Brandon, when, when is Monday's there. meeting? Yeah. time? 630, 630 at, Martin at Martin Memorial Hall. Yeah. And I'll just give this to you. Okay. Thank you. And we would love to talk to the board about some other stuff too, like uh, Parks and Rec and, you know, Something with our athletic program, getting together, and there was something else too. Um, what the word? Yeah, it'll come to me later. But uh, yeah, we have any, a couple any, of things. Anytime you want to so, get together yeah. with the so board. So I think it'd be great, like maybe after March, since we're all kind of kind of busy with our budgets and stuff right now. But yeah. maybe after March, if we could schedule a meeting to all get together and sit down and talk about ways that we can work together. Contact this guy and put yep. it on the agenda. Awesome. <laughs> All right. Um, so, are we still going to send a letter? <laughs> yeah, I don't think we need. I mean, do we need to send a letter? Okay. We'll just we'll come to their meeting, yeah. I guess. Okay. Just speaking. Okay, sorry. <laughs> are there any questions or any other comments on this topic before so we move on? Just that that was really helpful and informative. So we appreciate that. Yeah, I, li I like the uh, history because I only know since I've been here, so I, and so I didn't realize, you know, it has gone up and down. Uh, since I've been here, it's only. Um, <laughs> <laughs> do, you, do you have another one of those? Um, I wrote online. I was thinking. I, oh, we'll send it up to everybody. Okay, I'll scan it and send it out. Yeah. It'll also be available yeah. electronically on Friday on the what is still website under the select board packet. If there's anybody that wants a copy now, I have one. They can have mine. I can always get another one. Okay. Maybe, maybe, maybe we should just sign this letter and give it to them just so they can have it in their packet sure. as part of the something stuff. we discussed. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, I'll go ahead. We'll just, I'll just do this copy. Do you want just one copy enough? Yeah, that's fine. Just copy. 
But uh, Mark is not here today. But. And I'll just pass it over. Um, up next, we have the discussion on the budget. Um, Brian, did you want to give a little bit on this, or how do you want to handle this? <clears throat> yeah, I can go ahead and talk about that. So um, you guys have the, the copy of the proposed budget. Um, it's basically um, just what we did last year to keep things running the same way. Um, there's nothing too shocking in there as far as um, anything new. Um, I don't know if you guys have had a chance to look over the most updated one or not. I know that you just got it this morning, so I do apologize for that. Yeah. Um, but just an initial budget of where we're at, and this is what the BAC has looked at as well. And so they got the updated one today, too. So and I'll do my my regular budget report next month after we've looked at it, but I just wanted to give you guys an opportunity to take a look at it and see if there's anything glaring to you, anything that, um, and then I'll meet with the budget, the BAC, and see if there's anything that they wanted to or had questions on because I didn't get the feedback yet from them today, obviously. They are here at the meeting, and I think they did have a couple of questions. Okay. Asked about a couple of things. I have them noted down here on my paper. I can ask them if you want. It was about the academic field trips and the homeless oh, students yeah. not the being transportation. Included. Yeah, the transportation. And, yeah. transportation for uh, academic field trips and homeless students wasn't it budgeted? What's on the budget? I don't have the budget in front of me. I apologize. So it's a minute from the uh, budget line for twenty four. Oh, we put it back in. Uh, okay, we can put that back in. Yep, that shouldn't have been omitted. So. So that's seven thousand for both. Um, it'll be a total of nine thousand for all three. There's three that we were omitted, okay. but it would be a total of the seven thousand that we omitted, added to the two thousand. Oh, that's there. Yeah. Oh, okay. So seven thousand more than what's here. Yeah. Okay. It's the one circled in the package. Oh, okay. Yeah. Does anyone have any questions about the budget for Ryan? Most of us just got it this morning. So yeah. I haven't had a chance to look yeah. at it at all. Um, <clears throat> yeah. So I guess we'll get to you with questions and then you can uh, work on them for the next one. Okay. Yeah. Just let me know any questions you guys have. Um, and it gives a comparison to the 22 actuals. And then what we budgeted for FY23 as well. And so then there's some numbers that we adjusted a little bit here and there and tweaked them based on what we've used over the last two years. I guess one thing that stood out to me when I first, when I was looking at this and that uh, was the amount um, under expenditures for uh, elementary K to five um, for wages and benefits went up quite a bit. Is that, was there a, teacher added or well we did add um we had one elementary school teacher that we added last year um it was taken we had lost one for fy 22 when i got here we had somebody resign and so that was the part of the difference there but plus also the you know raise that teachers got that increased it some as well It seemed, it seemed like benefits went up a lot. Um, yeah, the cost of benefits overall have gone up for the cost for everything. I mean, so like out of proportion for elementary to secondary, like secondary, I mean, I know it's a lot less teachers, but only went up 5,000, whereas elementary benefits went up almost 100,000. It could be a difference in who's taking the, who's taking the benefits if they have families. Right. Yeah. That changes based on you. Mm -hmm. Based on the staff, okay. but something to look at. Maybe Brian, check that out with Ed. Uh, yeah, yeah we, 
just make sure those numbers are right because yeah. they just look a yeah. little really large. Okay, yeah, we met with him on Thursday as well to go over everything again, and so we have another meeting scheduled with him, so we can bring those items up again to make sure. Because there was a couple that I had questions where I thought where someone was taking a certain amount for benefits, but I was like, well, they only have you know two people or so why and so those things he was supposed to look at again and check them out. Sorry, I just clicked my mic. So we'll get those things taken care of. Anne Marie. Yes. I just want to remind us of a timeline that we have. Uh -huh. Next month is January. And yeah. everything has to be voted on and submitted so it goes into a town report by yes. mid to end January. So that's a little time crunch. We might have to think about alternate meetings just for budget. Yeah. Okay. Um so when when is the when is the last drop dead date for the that we have to have the budget for the thing? Around mid January. So that's the fifteenth. So it's January fifteenth. Okay. Um so when is our next meeting scheduled? Should be January tenth. It's kind of close. Um but I guess there is time to get a second meeting and um you know if we can just we can have that as our meeting, but if we need one, we can have everybody pencil in one later that week, just in case we need a second meeting that week. Okay. We'll work. We'll figure that out at the end of this meeting. Um, so it sounds like no no drastic changes in programs or staffing at Weather No. Yeah, but we know we know the budget is up. Um, yes, the budget so is up because costs are up for everything. Costs are up and. Um, BSU, the assessments were up, and, and we talked about this in the budget meeting. Um, what it, good and bad, Weathersfield enrollment is up, but the assessment is split um, based on equalized pupil numbers. And so when one school's numbers go up, and in this case, the other two schools' numbers went down, Weathersfield gets dinged a little bit harder. Um, so that's, that's some of it. Um, and some of those costs were driven by um, special education if we are required um, to, to pay for it and, and, and we should um, and the negotiated agreement uh, contracted agreement for um, support staff there was a significant increase in their wages in the last round of negotiations so we feel that as well um, which they also deserve it <laughs> yeah you know um, that was a, a you know a positive um, negotiated contract in my opinion the staff support staff are primarily um really boots on the ground working with with some challenging kids sometimes um supporting our teachers and they deserve a, a little wage and, and so we appreciate that but it does drive the budget up so those are the biggies i think and i think um as far as wages go i mean you have to stay competitive and in today's market with wages going up everywhere and they have to multiple positions unfilled. Yeah, <laughs> it's hard to fill positions yeah. and we need to fill them or the students aren't being served properly. So, And the healthcare costs have gone up significantly. And that's a state negotiated program. We have no control uh, on that, so. Yes, Christine, John? you may probably answer this. Is there any um, indication from AOE when, when they're gonna start implementing the waiting factors, the new waiting factors? I'm uh, concerned that it might be July 1st. It's phased in over five years. It's phased in. Yeah, the meeting I was at Friday, um, it sounded like 2025. Okay, so, I think so it's we'll still, it doesn't yeah. affect this budget. Yeah. It yeah. will next year, though, a yeah. little bit. Yeah. If, it, if it stays the way it's proposed, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, great question. And what, what are the questions? Do you have, do you have a percentage increase from, from last year? Yes, it was 7.5, I believe. 7.5. 7 7.41. Uh, 7 and one last one, high school tuition and student, that number? That number went up a bit at 20,000, I believe, EJ. Yeah, 27,000. 27, did, did the population yeah. change? Yeah. Um, yeah. We gained a student. We have another student. multiple conversations going on. Sorry. Um, yes, I think a lot. Okay. Do you guys have a question? Oh, okay. <laughs> um, yeah, so as far as um, high school tuition goes, it went up 27,000 in this year's budget, and that was due to 
um, I believe there's an additional student, you know, one more than we one had more. last year, and also just Everybody. and the rest of it is just you know slight okay. increases across the board. Thank you for costs. Yes. Well, I'd, like, I'd like to say, first of all, that we're faced with the same thing over on our side of the town yeah. <laughs> uh, with the um, increases in costs that you know, we basically have no control over. And, and then there's the competitive nature within our, our uh, workforce. Um, what, can, you, can you tell me what the ranking of this school is in, in the state compared to uh, cost of people? Oh, I can find out. I'm not sure what Weathersfields is off here. Pretty hot. Um, I, I think I, I think I had something like last year. I knew what it was, but I don't know what it is this year. Uh, I think John, you had sent me like a link to it. The per pupil cost was right near the top. I'm not sure that the uh, what the educational aspect of that is, and on from testing. Uh, I think those are two numbers you have to look at at the same time. Well, I was going to say the same thing, but I was going to use a different number. I was going back to the CLA where we talked about land values and people and things being fair and equal. And have you have you explored at all why Weathersfield is in that top tier we, in the cost per pupil? We have a bit. Um, it's because well, we're one of the few districts left that still is a school choice. A large part of our budget. Um, I think if we didn't have that, if we were, say, rolled in with uh, uh, Windsor, our taxes would probably be a lot, our budget would be a lot lower. Their cost, Windsor's cost per pupil is quite a bit lower than ours is. But that would mean losing the school. That would mean losing choice. Not, that would be losing school choice. We would still have an elementary school. Oh, I see. I see. Just like how, um, so, uh, you mean for the. Uh, I mean for high school students. Yes. Oh, yeah. So that, that increases our town cost quite a bit. Um, but I also understand it's very popular in town and it's the reason why a lot of people move to this it, it town. Um, so, yes. You you have the direct comparison because you have West Windsor. Yes. And um, I would, before you make that assumption, I've talked to a West Windsor parent who says they made a foolish choice yes. some years back because the tuition, once you give up the choice, mm -hmm. the one designated high school can set really whatever tuition mm -hmm. it chooses to set. Mm -hmm. And so uh, this Wentz Windsor parent said that Windsor High School is now charging more than Woodstock High School. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm just saying you have the comparison. Yeah, I mean, it's all very and complicated. Ask, I, I'd like to ask um, Superintendent Bork if that's just a wild community rumor that I heard from a disgruntled parent, or if that might be true. The, the, the tuition cost for Windsor versus Woodstock? Yes. I can find out for you. OK. Because yeah, I, I know what we I, pay I is very similar for the present yeah. something that one parent told yeah. me as a fact. I'm not it's, sure. It's I know fact. there's still an agreement. I mean, they had they grandfathered kids into that plan. So there are some students in, in West Windsor who are still having high school choice until they graduate out. I think it was, I, I don't remember the, the number, but there's, I think they're in their second to last or last year of that. So there still are costs associated with, with that as well. Um, but I, I will definitely look into that for you. Yes, Mike. Um, I, I, I've never had any kids. <laughs> um, but I, I view this school um, through my, my activity in, 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 in the town, uh, exposure in the town, that this, this is probably our greatest asset in this town, and we do not want to lose this. Um, you know, a lot of us will, will bitch and cry about the cost, but the, the budgets pass every year. My fear is when we have that high pupil cost comparative in the state, is there ever an issue where that becomes a problem and the state comes down and says, look, you guys got to do something different in, in, in your, you know, is, is, you know, I don't want to see us lose the school. Okay. No, that, that doesn't happen. But um, I mean, and for the next year or two, there's not even a penalty for having over the amount. Um, right. Yeah. yeah. 
Um, so, at times, there's a penalty if you're over the, the state average by a, a certain amount, and you pay a per penalty cost per student, but that's on a, a hold because of COVID. And um, so we have, a, I think, two more years. Yeah, the reason. Um, but the state would never come and close the school for that reason. Just they would just charge they just more taxes. They just, they just penalize you. Similar to John's point on the CLA. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so we both have things to fix. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm hoping that the state will raise their minimum up higher than because really we our budget. I mean, you can ask the budget advisory committee. We don't have a lot of fluff in this budget. Uh, the costs are what they are. There's not a lot of fluff. <laughs> I, I can understand that. Where our budgets pretty much came through the same. But with, with about a seven to eight percent increase, yeah. Uh, it depends on where you look. Fuel, uh, mm -hmm. you're not. We got hit with a, a, a dispatch fee that we've never had to pay before, uh, and that, those were twenty or thirty dollar thousand dollar fees across seven departments um, that we weren't anticipating. So um, it's tough. It, it is tough. Budgets are tough. <laughs> um, does anyone else have any more questions? So, I, Jamie, I'm, I'm assuming Brian is still on. Under the instruction and curriculum development, it looks like we increased for the FY23 budget, but then brought it back down for FY24. Do, do we know what the difference there is? What page are you on? Oh, uh, sorry, seven. Seven. Let me look at the line item real quick so I can get a visual on it. Hold on. Sorry. Yeah. Why is it like so it's under, it's under instruction? Way high and then it came back lower. So it was the, uh, the teacher in that position. And I think we had originally going to do two teachers in that position. One was not hired. Brian, it's the K through four math interventionist and the five through eight. Both of them were in the FY23 budget. We did not, we could not find a K, I mean, a five through eight. We do have a K through four. Yes. Correct. Yeah. Yes. For the math intervention. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. So he won't try to hire that. So we're not, yeah, we're not going to have that person. We're, we're not, we, we can't find a, a five through eight. Right. We're hoping that could be something, maybe find some title funding for that no. or some kind of grant funding. Well, the bad news about the title funding, just to be transparent, is um, in the past, as you may or may not know, title um, funds are based on free and reduced lunch rates. Uh, the state is changing that, but um, and they've waived it uh, for the last two years. Weathersfield is has not been a title school. It's been a um, part part. You get part credit. Um, you have to be above forty percent to be a full. Title one school. So we have two schools in our SU who are have been title schools, Heartland and Windsor. Um, but because lunch has been free for all students, lunch and breakfast, we've had a very difficult time getting the forms from families. So our rates have oh, dropped considerably, okay. um, even though we've sent and called um, to try to get those forms wow. turned in. And we don't know if this, uh, if, if we'll get a waiver this year because it's federal federal money, it's not state money, and Vermont um, decided to continue free lunch and breakfast for students this year, and, you know, the rest of the country did not. Some states probably did, so we're hopeful, but I would I would not count on title money for funding additional positions. We just don't know. We may, is, lose, we may lose some, to be honest with you. Is school breakfast in this budget? No, because it's going to be you. free. The S that's a part of the SU assessment. Yeah. But um Okay. So so the whole district is doing breakfast? The whole state. Uh, uh yes, yes. In it yes, we all we all serve breakfast to kids right. for free. Yes. Because we grabbed part of the surplus from last year mm -hmm. and now the vultures are circling mm -hmm. over the surplus from this year. Yeah. Yeah. So it's it the state it, it's statewide currently. We we right. anticipate right. that will continue next year. Um, if it doesn't continue next year, the SU budget does not include money to pay for lunch for all students. That would be additional costs that the 
that the committee could uh, approve. We wanted to overspend that line, as I recall. Does that sound right, Jamie? I know I missed the last time we spent that together. Yeah. I, it came up, and Mia and I asked Larry, and that was the response. We're Wait, anticipating our, the state's going to fund it again next year. Bear <laughs> with me a second. I got to tell a quick story. Okay. <laughs> I, I did a presentation over in the fourth graders, and when I got done, one of the fourth graders came up to me and said, I never used to eat breakfast. Now I do. I said, does it help you study? He says, yes, it does very much. So yeah, yeah. it's important. It, it is. Yeah. Um, it's a lot of money. And, and then the question becomes, should the people that can't afford to pay, pay, and the ones that can't are subsidized? And that's a philosophical question, too. And that you're going to solve in the legislature. <laughs> <laughs> it does make a difference. It makes yep. a difference for a lot of things. So. It does. And take care of that bit about filling out the free and reduced lunch forms. It's going to figure it out some other way. <laughs> that's that's it's, under consideration. Yeah. There's a different way to figure out income because people don't, they're private. They don't, uh -huh. you know, why, why do you need to know how much I'm making? Right. And the state knows all that already. Anyway. Right. Yes, right. they do. <laughs> right. So we, what, what I've heard is it'll, it'll be a household income form. It'll be a Agreed. mandatory form that everybody has to fill out as part of school registration, yep. I believe. So. And you still won't get some of them back. <laughs> well, we're yeah. talking about how to make that happen. Yeah. So, are there any more comments on the budget? No. Okay. Um, up next, we have the drama club update. Mm. Thank you. Um, thank you for coming, thank you. Brandon. Thank you. Thank you. Let us know when you want to get together. Yep. Yeah, I think uh, you know after we sort of have our reorganization meetings. Um, yeah. Um. So, Mark, do you want to lead the drama club update? Um. Yes, I can tell you the. Uh, uh, this is not the. <laughs> uh, my, the audio coming through. It's very really. choppy. It's very very choppy. Uh, mm -hmm. Put off the uh, next meeting then. Yeah, like if you shut. Sometimes meeting. if you shut down like all your video, it'll work better. Yeah. Okay. Oh, he'll update next month. Okay. All right. There are any performances coming up that we need to let anybody know about before next month, are there? Auditions are coming up. Auditions. Okay. Yeah, for the so what, what are the auditions that are coming up? Uh, for the Little Mermaid. Little Mermaid auditions. Yeah. And when will those be? Yeah, you had to ask. <laughs> I, 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 yeah, I can't remember the dates right now. Okay. Mark, can you tell us the dates for auditions? Do you know? We do not have the official dates yet. They're scheduled. Okay, so everyone, everyone, stay tuned for audition dates for Little Mermaid. Um, I th thought they were January fifth and sixth were the audition dates. That's what we put in the flyer, in the oh. last newsletter. Thanks, Brian. You're welcome. Okay. Um. Then <clears throat> next we have school safety. Do we have anything to report on that, Brian? The only thing is we've been continuing to work with law enforcement and our fire um, departments just about what we're doing for school safety and then obviously getting our perimeter lights checked and taken care of, like I mentioned, because that's part of school safety. And then what we did as far as the emergency early release was great, so, which I already mentioned in the in our in the lead learner report. So um, can, it's, it's a, a monthly thing that we're working on. It's continuous. Yeah. Yeah. Um, have, has there been any progress on having um, the state come in here and evaluate our, uh, you know, our setup, assessment. our assessment for our risk assessment. risk assessment? Yes. No, not at this point. We still haven't had. Um, I'll reach out again to Jim Taft and see. Okay, thank you. They are. I mean, the state right now is doing. Um, not necessarily a risk assessment, but it could feed into that 
assessing every, they have a plan to assess every school in the state of Vermont because our facilities are um, in need of maintenance and repair and sometimes mm -hmm. um, even new facilities need to be um, built. So they're going to rank all schools based on mm -hmm. these audits that they're doing. I know Heartland is, uh, what's today, 13th? Mm -hmm. So was in the first round, uh, the 12th and 13th, the state has uh, partnered with a company, I'm not gonna remember the name, and they're, and, they're, and they're doing these assessments. So it will have, I mean, it's facilities, but it, uh, it'll, include. it'll include all of that, yeah. Um, I can add, we've been working as an administrative team um, on behavior threat assessments. So in terms of when you have students who are making threats to the school or others or to themselves, you know, what protocols do we follow? Um, and and some of us went to the governor's safety conference in, last month. I think I reported at the yes. ASU meeting. Mm -hmm. um, and they gave us a template to use and really some information when you do have um, students who are isolated, depressed, um, feeling alienated, you know, there are, there are certain uh, flags that you, that you um, see in here and there are ways to support them. So we're coming up with protocols and a behavior threat assessment across the SU to be able to use when those situations happen, um, which is around school safety and making sure our kids are safe. So continue to do that work yeah um let's see um so we already sort of does the bac you guys have a separate report or just what we talked about at the budget just the what we yeah. talked about in the budget okay. mm -hmm. all right so um and then do you guys know that you're supposed to write a little thing for the town report okay um up next is the Hicks Nichols, and I believe Diane is on. That would be correct, Anne Marie. Thank you. <laughs> so, evening, everyone. Um, Diana Stiltson, chairperson of the Hicks Nichols Committee. Uh, we received one, um, an application from Melissa Cole for public uh, puppets and education uh, that she would like to do this year. Uh, she would be doing different programs for K-4 and then 5-8. The Hicks-Nichols Committee met the first part of December, and we approved it. But according to the procedure, it has to come to the board to get final approval. Um, Mr. Jewell is now a member, the board representative for the Hicks-Nichols Committee. So he is on our board. It's a, pub, a puppet per, uh, production for K-4 that will teach the students what worry means. It's normal and skills to help them manage their worries. The 5-8 production is not theatrical and it doesn't involve puppets, but it's teaching the middle level students about the brain science behind stress and skills to manage stress. Um, so, we thought the Hicks Nichols Committee, and I know Jessica Brown's on, uh, we thought as the Hicks Nichols Committee that um, with the anxiety and everything that's happened with COVID in the last few years, that this would meet the criteria for that for social skills. The cost for a full day for five shows is 3,500. And that's what we were looking to approve. And um, how much money was in the budget for this year? Like how much are we spending of the total? The, the Hicks Nichols and BJ can help me out this because she's um, one of the trustee of the funds and she's the one who tells me the total. Um, the Hicks Nichols account has, um, I believe, 70000 in it. So 3500 coming out is yeah. not going to make a much of a dent. And then we would put out an application in the spring to the community, the staff, parents, anybody who's interested in doing an application for this. Okay, great. I will put that on our items. For okay, action thank you. Right, thank you. Did anyone have any questions for Diana about the program? 
Anyone online have questions for Diana? Okay. All right. Um, up next is uh, the superintendent search committee. Um, we are looking for a permanent superintendent and um, they're, they're forming right now a committee, which I believe is what, 10 to 12 members? Yeah. And um, each school board is being asked to provide one member from their school board to be on this committee. Um, so is anyone interested in that position, wanting to volunteer to do it? It involves about four meetings throughout the month of January. January into February. Into February at, at 4 p.m. And um, I sort of sprinkled around the calendar. I can get you an exact list of dates. Um, and then like a full day of interviews at, of interviews at the sometime in February, right? Um, she's uh, she slotted the two weeks before the break. So I think the 6th through the 17th. It wouldn't be all of those days, but okay. at least one. <laughs> yeah. Mark, are you volunteering? Yes, I, I can volunteer for this again. Um, I was a part of the one. I was part of the one last year. Um, so, and if in the uh, did I hear correctly that the meetings are at four? Yeah, they're all they take place at four, except for at the end. There's a full day meeting. Okay, um, I would be willing unless somebody else, another board member, wants to jump in. Okay. Is there anyone else that would like to do it or? Great desire. <laughs> four is tough. Huh? Four is tough. Yeah, four is yeah. impossible for me. Um, and so is the full day. I just don't have that many days off. And my son's graduating this year, and I have to save my days off. For I, would, I would definitely do it if if it was if Mark can't. a hardship for someone okay. else. Have flexible right. schedules. Okay. So, Mark, if you would like to do it, it's yours. But if you feel like it's going to be trouble for you, Vincent will do it. Okay, um, I can do that. Okay, all right. So we will put Mark down as our board representative to the superintendent search committee. You email Amy. Yeah. Okay. Um, Amy, are and I guess we should probably all vote on that. Um, does somebody want to nominate Mark? I'll make a motion to nominate Mark. Okay, Nicole is going to make a motion to nominate Mark. All in favor say aye. 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 That's unanimous. Um, and then Mark abstained. <laughs> <laughs> um, there was some talk about perhaps having a community member, but that doesn't seem to be totally fleshed out yet. Yeah. And so if so. anyone has any ideas, um, you can give me their names, but I'm not sure yet because I think we're like the people that are helping us with this search, uh, she really would like to keep it under 12 people. And if we start including community members, it, you know, it very quickly gets out of hand. Um, Not the thing, so, people, so, so currently it, 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 in the plan from, and it is um, a consultant from the VSBA, Vermont School Boards Association, uh, four board members, one from each board, two <coughs> central office staff, two um, lead learners, principals, mm -hmm. a teacher, a support staff member. Um, and I think that gets us to 10, if I did my math right. Um, yeah. So uh, she did talk about ways to engage community and get feedback. Um, a survey went out um, uh, last week, I think, yeah. just with, you know, what, what characteristics are you looking for in a permanent superintendent? Um, and I think there'll be other ways to, um, engage community once the search committee puts forth some finalists. So yeah, once the search committee puts forth finalists, there will be, um, what's it called? Um, stakeholders, there'll be yeah. stakeholder yeah. groups formed, like there'll be a, a group of students who will interview yeah. the people, there'll be a group of teachers, there'll be a group of parents, yeah, so different stakeholder groups yeah. and community yeah. members, of course. Similar to the process, if you remember, I'm retired, but I am. It'll be a very similar process. Um, it's a, it's a, uh, it's a test to see if you can persevere. Yeah. The entire day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. So 
so we so we probably won't need a community member uh, for this one. But, so up next we have items for action, and um, the only thing I have here is to approve the Hicks Nichols grant for the puppet program. Um, I'll take a motion to approve. Three thousand five hundred dollars for. I'll make a motion. Jamie's making the motion, and um, Diana, can you just say the name of the? I can. It it didn't have a fancy title, Anne Marie. She <laughs> just called it puppets in education. Puppets in education. Okay, so we are. Um, that is the name of the. Program. Yeah. So um, three thousand five hundred dollars for the puppets and education program funded by the Hicks Nichols Committee. Um, all in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. You said I didn't see. It. Okay, so that's uh, <laughs> that is unanimous. Okay. Um, do we have need for executive session? Anyone have anything? Brian, do you have anything? No, I, I don't have anything at this time. Okay. All right. Um, then we come to setting the next agenda. <clears throat> So we have January 10th at 6.30. Budget, budget, budget. Budget, budget, budget. Exactly. And we'll squeeze in there the drama club update. <laughs> I'll let you know how everybody did on auditions. Yeah. Great. Do you want, and um, some schools don't do the that report that night. They just do a budget report. It's up to you. Um, yeah, I think we can skip it that one. Okay, yeah. Just focus on focus on the budget. Okay, it's all about the budget. No mm -hmm. admin report. Yeah, and I'll put. Um, I think under items for action, we're going to have to budget as well. As yeah, as well. items for action yeah. will be approving the budget. Yeah, and if we don't come to an agreement on the tenth. Um, how are people's schedules looking the rest of the week? Does anyone have anything the rest of the week? I can't really don't know, but I mean, I there's a community I dinner here on the twelfth. On the twelfth, I think. Is that right? I also have a hard time. Okay, so is that right, BJ? Do you have January and the twelfth in my calendar? Brian. No, that that yeah. schema has been postponed right now. Okay. Okay. So, I take that back. so the the twelfth is wide open right now. Um, not for Nicole. Well, what time? Um, I mean, we could do we can move the time around. What time is good for you? It, you know, it should be fine. It should be okay. Okay. Um, so we could can everyone do six thirty on the twelfth? And this this is only if necessary. Yes. Yes. Yep. Okay. Yes. Yes. <laughs> So if we will, we'll warn it that night. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then we can cancel it on yeah. the 10th if we don't yeah. need it. Okay. Okay. All right. Does anyone have anything that they didn't get a chance to say during the meeting? Speak now. Grab a hold of these. I can. <laughs> Do you want to go? I was just going to say, can I say a quick thanks to our transportation company? And whoever handles the transportation company yeah. and the bus drivers <laughs> and, and all of that, because I see posts in other schools and we're just very, I, I mean, we are blessed. Yeah. yeah. I mean, so, so I've, I've had to deal with some stuff up in Woodstock and I know I've seen all those Springfield posts. Yes. And, <laughs> the morning yeah. of, of no, yeah. notifying that your bus isn't running. I, right. I can't imagine. So thanks to everybody that's involved in the, the, the transportation. I second that wholeheartedly. <laughs> yes, a, Nicole? I know that it has the, the, the budget for last year on here, mm -hmm. but I, I would like to see a little bit more of the, the actual line items comparing last year to this year since I wasn't on the board last year. Um, do we have a more detailed version that Nicole could have? Well, not necessarily, but for last year, so I can do a comparison of the two years based off of each category. Um. 
I'm sorry, what was the question? I didn't hear it. On the actual bank, the budget from last year, that looks like this. Oh, okay. Well, we're um, still within this, FY23, this, so we wouldn't have actual, yeah. so not FY23 yet, Nicole, but we have actual, so it should be from FY22 on. So this, right? this is right, right. I get, year. I get that, but yeah. like, are all of the categories the same? Like each of the line items? Yeah, from okay. year to yes. year. Okay. Yes, that's yeah. what I'm asking. Is it kind of like you yes. just go, okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's yeah. what I was. Yeah. And if they were different, you would see like because you're carrying forward FY22, 23, and 24, you would see the zeros. Yeah, okay. I think she's okay, Brian. And yeah, if any good. new things, I thought you would see. Zeros. Okay, it was just really hard to hear, so I apologize. <laughs> and then I saw that um, on our in our folder for today's meeting. There were a bunch of warrants posted yeah, online. Online. I think um, that was the discussion. That was okay. um, Gail put them in there. Okay. But I think you had said we'll wait on that. Yeah. Or um, well, I more? actually I I was waiting on a discussion because I thought we didn't have a plan yet for how we yeah. were going to do that. Um, so is that how we're going to do it? We're that's just going to post would, that. That's what it would look like. If that's okay. what you want. Okay, because I'd rather, I mean, I just kind of looked at them briefly and I'd rather, I mean, that would probably be like an hour to read through all of those yeah. at each meeting. Yeah. They're very detailed. That's it's not I, like summar summarized. That's why I was saying um, if it was summarized and yeah. we just, we, I mean, I'm not saying we yeah. should have to, if I have to go through <laughs> yeah. all of those, I would, we would be here forever. Yeah. But I mean, um, but uh, I mean, it's on the, it's on the website. If people are interested in looking and want to see where the money's going. That's what the select board does. They can go and do that. So, so yeah. You, to I, think, I think that that's fine. Okay. Yeah. Um, Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, you're welcome. I'm sure she does that. It's not, yeah, maybe quickly. I don't, think it, I, I don't think it was. I'll, I'll okay. check with her. But was it a lot of work, do you think? I that's what I'm asking. Yeah, yeah, I'll check. I'll double check with her. Because I was thinking, because it is a lot to go through, just like a cover page or something of just just so that the public can go on and be like, oh, this is, yeah. I think, yeah, I think to, to summarize it would be more time. Yeah, but, I think um, she could just run that up in e-finance, but to, to create what you're talking yeah, like about, it, she would have it's to. It's in batches, so I just didn't yeah. know if it was like a report of the batches. And okay, batches. I'll check. I'll check with her. Okay. All right, um, I'll take a motion to adjourn. Everybody, I'll take a motion to adjourn. I'll, I'll make a motion. Okay. <laughs> Nicole's making the motion to adjourn. All in favor, say aye. 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 Okay, aye. we'll see you all in January.